Hi everyone, this is Mike the Prepper Nerd, and uh, this is going to be a quick video uh, to show those of you who are using the food uh, or the prep inventory system uh, how to enter your food items via the barcode feature, which I've, I've gotten a fair amount of questions about. I wanted to do a video to walk you through the process. So, Okay, so sorry about this, but I need to cut in on this video real quick to show you an, a really important feature using the mobile app with the barcode feature um, that I didn't cover the first time that I recorded this. So I want to cut this in uh, and show you real quick that uh, you can actually scan the barcode with um, with your phone. So you can see here I'm in the in the uh, food inventory and I'll go into the barcode field and you can see that these icons underneath that uh, the blinking cursor this is ABC one two three and then over to the right there's a little pin drop and then there's a barcode and then to the right of that is the camera and an images icon but you if you tap on the barcode icon it'll open your camera okay so I've got some uh, coconut oil from Kirkland from uh, Costco and I'm just going to turn it to the barcode and it captured it boom done check and it is now added to um, to my sheet in this case uh, I don't have this barcode yet in the barcode database but uh, I'm about to do that right now but I just wanted to show you again how easy that is right I just uh, get into the cell tap the barcode icon and point it and it's done see how easy that is that's great isn't it and here's an example of adding a barcode using the scanner feature and it automatically populating the rest of the fields. So just go into the field, tap the barcode, point it at the item, and scan the barcode. Tap the check mark, and you're good to go. All right, back to the uh, rest of the video. Uh, it's fairly straightforward, fairly simple, and you can use any device to do it. Uh, there's just a little bit different process, um, whether you're using in the Smartsheet app or whether you're using a um, computer via a um, web browser. So I'm going to show you, you can see that um, some some uh, rows have these blue icons, and I'm, I'm on a computer, on, the, on a web browser on a computer. so. Uh, I want to show you what this looks like on the computer. So the, some of these rows have these blue icons and some of them don't have the blue icons. The blue icons simply indicate that uh, that row is ready for um, you to enter your food via the barcode. It has you know the lookup capability for the barcode database. And you'll see most of the, well, the empty rows that have the blue icons are down at the bottom. So if you're gonna add a food using, or try to add a food, because obviously you're not gonna know whether a barcode exists yet in the database unless you try it, right? So what I would recommend that you do is if you're gonna add a food with the barcode, you're going to add it at the bottom of the, of the uh, sheet where you can see all these empty rows with all of the blue arrow icons. So I'm just going to copy this one um, and pretend I'm typing in this number down here and you'll just see that all of these fields populate. These five fields in that row that have the blue arrow automatically populate based on what's in the barcode lookup database. And the only field that's really required at this point um, in order to add this item to your inventory is the package quantity because without the package quantity the system doesn't know how many total servings you have or how many total calories etc so i could just add the package quantity and i'm done now for some of you who are using these other fields like i am uh, you would then want to indicate uh, your storage area your storage container your storage container name best by date um, for for that food item Okay, for it to be a complete entry for you. So, um, you know, one other thing I want to point out here is, uh, you know, maybe the, the the food item has a default category in the database that maybe you don't use, and if you don't use that category, this will be highlighted red. So let's just give show you, right? So this ASDF doesn't exist in my in my categories. So if it if this is just an example, obviously, but if uh, if this was the pre-populated category it would highlight red indicating that it's not in your category so then you would just go in here and you would select the 
the most appropriate category for you. Okay. Um, and uh, another uh, aspect to this is, let me just undo that. Let me just um, remove the barcode here. And let's say that um, I'm, I'm adding a food either manually or I add a barcode that doesn't yet exist in the database, okay? Um, so I can just, I'm just gonna enter a, a barcode here. It says no match, okay? So that's your indication that this barcode does not yet exist in the barcode database, okay? So I can just go in here, since I'm on a computer, I can go in here and I can say, okay, well, I'm just gonna add my food anyway. Um, nuts and nut butter peanut butter, you know, the location, etc. I've got one of these. I'm reading this information off of the, uh, off of the label of that item, right? So let's just, I'm just um, making this stuff up as I go here, but just for the sake of example. So now I've added this food with this barcode. I've overwritten the default you know, these blue arrows are now gone, meaning that uh, I, these are manual entries rather than lookup entries, okay? Um, two tablespoons, whatever. Um, so what that does actually is since this barcode did not exist in the barcode database, but I went ahead and entered all of this information anyway, the system is gonna automatically send me this information, the information for this row, um, it's gonna send that information to me into kind of a staging area for the, the barcode lookup database. So in that staging area, I won't know where the information came from. I can't like trace it back to any particular person. So it's completely anonymous once, once it gets there. Um, but it just allows me the opportunity to um, make sure that the information is of you know, it's accurate, it's of high quality, it, you know, it has the right um, kind of consistent format that I'm looking for, uh, for the database, um, and that the numbers make sense. Um, and that consistent format that I'm looking for, for those of you who are entering your food using barcodes, and you're, 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 you're actually uh, contributing to the barcode database, and there's there's a lot of progress on that so far. I think we have over 500 items now, just, you know, in the last couple of days, there's been a couple hundred items added, so that's really great. Um, but for those of you that are are doing this and you're overwriting, you know, the category and the description, etc. What I'd love it, love to see is if you could uh, use this format. You would do, uh, you would start with the high level uh, food description, like peanut butter, and then you can say, and then you can get a little more specific. So I could say, okay, crunchy or smooth, right? And then. Um, and then the size, like, let's say this one's, uh, I don't know, 20 ounces. I don't know what sizes they come in offhand. And then the brand. So high level food description, more specific food description, size, and brand. If everybody submitted your, um, your food entries in that, in that format, I would be able to process through all of those, um, those new entries to the barcode database very quickly and uh, we'd make a lot of progress very very quickly very fast so that's how you do it from a computer now I'm gonna switch over to my um, iPhone so I can show you how you're gonna enter food uh, via a mobile device um, which is actually really convenient um, you know when you're processing through uh, you know, after coming home from the grocery store or from Costco or whatever. So let's uh, switch over there and I'll see you in just a second. Okay, so now I'm in the Smartsheet app uh, and I'm gonna show you the same thing um, just, you know, within the app itself. So what I'm gonna do here is, as you can see here, this is my food inventory, um, but you're not, you don't see the, um, those blue arrows on the app. Um, this is something that I expect that they get, they're going to change in the future because there's a little bit of a limitation in the app. So let's just say that I'm entering um, a new food. I got home from Costco. I'm you know processing through my groceries and I'm entering food that I'm going to put back. So I'm just going to enter a value here. And you can see the same thing happened here, no match, right? So, but the problem is, is 
I can't edit this category. Okay, I just tried tapping on no match and it says formula cells uh, can only be edited from a computer. So again, this is a limitation that I expect them to um, uh, make an enhancement for and, and to allow in the future. So it'll be as, just as easy as on the computer. But as of right now, this is how it, it currently exists. So if, if you have a no match, you're gonna have to then, you know, go, you know, you can either go to the top and I can, um, I can insert here, row above, right? And then the same thing, if I include a barcode, then that will help to contribute this food item to the database, okay? It'll go into that staging area, and then I can approve it or decline it. Now I can just enter this information manually because I went to the top of the list, okay? The bottom of the list, is set up to use the barcode lookup specifically, but at the top of the list, it's set up to allow you to enter um, your food items manually. So I'm not gonna go through this, you can just see it, that it's working, right? It's, it's, I'm able to manually add the food item. Now down here, I'm just gonna copy this just to demonstrate it. I'm gonna copy that. scroll down to the bottom and just show you that when I populate that value here hit that check mark it populates that items information same the same fields okay it's the uh, the default category the description the measure the servings per uh, uh, container and calories per serving so then I just go in here and enter the package quantity and then it'll calculate the totals over here for me okay but again um, in this case I can't not I cannot update the category now if I wanted to um, you know this this category just the same as the desktop may be a default category that I don't have in my list so if that's the case it'll show up red just like on the computer um, but I would need to go to my computer to make make an update to that category, which once I'm on my computer, I can I can override the lookup value, right? Um, if I didn't want to do that, then you know even though the barcode existed, I could just delete this record and I can enter it all manually. But again, uh, at the top of the list. So I think that's really all I wanted to cover in uh, this video here. I uh, want to thank you for uh, watching. I appreciate the opportunity to support you with this um, you know, prep inventory system. And uh, I will see you in the next video. This is Mike, the Prepper Nerd, and I am... <laughs>